Originally from Turkey? Originally no. from Turkey? No. Ah, you are representing both Turkey and Germany now. Huh? <laughs> right. Yes. Thank you. Why the German lady is sitting next to you? Who should have represented, represented Germany? He said that he's from Pakistan. Hmm? Pakistan. What? This question <laughs> is Pakistan. He's a Pakistani yeah. who resides okay. in Germany. Yeah. So you have taken charge of <laughs> Turkey and Pakistan now. I announced everybody to send this question. Yes, he asked that the Turkish ulama says that the founder ah, see, of this... See, this is it. Yes. It was the Turkish ulama which were involved. That is why you have been chosen to ask this question. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> that uh, the founder of the Ahmadiyya community had prof uh, prophesied that he is going to be married to Mohammedi uh, Begum. Begum. And Sorry. Nikah had already been announced on the he in the heaven. Yes. She was never married to him in this world. Could Huzur kindly give us the detail of that event? This question does not uh, confine itself to the Turkish Shalom at all. It is a general question which has been repeatedly asked by all non ahmadis who are instigated by non ahmadi ulama who think they specialize in this subject. This requires a long answer which I have already given in writing. I have discussed in detail all the elements which are to be focused and they have to be highlighted. The very prophecy indicates that although in the heaven this nikah has been organized, but on earth it will not happen so. If it had happened so, then a prophecy of the death of her father would not have been made at all. The prophecy of the death of her father was conditional to his denial to marry her to him. So that prophecy contains elements which prove what is contrary to what is being proved by the Muslim or other non amdi Muslim Rama. Secondly, about uh, her husband, Hazrat Masih has also prophesied. Now the point is, if she was not to marry, Another person, how could he, she be referred to as having married a person other than Hazrat Basim al Islam? You understand the point? So the prophecy, despite the marriage in the heaven, describes all these things which happened on the earth. But the most conclusive point which I have made in my written answer and also which I would like to repeat here is that if the prophecies, prophecy was not fulfilled then the first evidence of its unfulfillment should have come from Muhammad Begum herself and from her husband Mr. Sultan Beg. Olema repeatedly went to them and beseeched them to just announce that this prophecy was false and they are witness. They adamantly refused their pleas, rejected their pleas. Once the Olema went to Mirza Sultan Beg and said, let us say what we like to say about you. You just keep quiet. Don't support Mr. Ghulam Ahmed. He said, no, I will not do that. If you attribute false things to me, I'll announce publicly that you're wrong and these are not my views. So it is a strange thing that the unrelated people, Olema, were totally unrelated to this prophecy. They claim it is not fulfilled, but the people who are related to it, they claim it is fulfilled. And they are Muhammad Begum herself and her husband. 
Now, another great proof is that there was a son born to them, Muhammad Begum and Mirza Sultan Beg, by the name of Mirza Muhammad Isaq. He should have known whether the prophecy was fulfilled or not. He might have heard from the talk in the home. And he had more sensitivity about the honor of her mother than any other person could be. He became an Ahmadi. <laughs> an open Ahmadi and suffered at the, at the hand of these ulamas himself. Still they, they claim that this prophecy is not fulfilled. Now, as far as the heavenly nikahs are concerned, we have a hadith of Anasur sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which says that his nikah is read in heaven with Maryam. Imran, Maryam uh, al, al Imran. Ibn. Huh? Ibn Imran. Ibn Imran. It was read in heaven while in reality on earth it was not read at all anywhere. So the heavenly nikahs mean quite a different thing. It might have indicated that this girl, this woman, would remain pious and honest to, in, in the sight of Allah so that in the heaven, in the hereafter, she'll be married to you. Like Imrata Imran is married in heaven to Hazrat Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and in reality on earth she is not married to him. So the mullahs do not understand these refined spiritual things. And they go on blemishing Hazrat Rasulullah for things which are totally denied by the persons concerned, but the mullah does not know it. You understand the point clearly? Thank you. Now I have written a book on this subject. I think it was published in the name of Hadi Ali. Yes. Right? Yes. So this book should be translated into Turkish as well. Mention that if anyone should have been sensitive to Mamdi Begum, it should have been her own son, mm -hmm. not the ulama. Mm -hmm. He must have been far more sensitive to the honor of his mother. Yet the ulama speak of the honor of that lady and the son himself confesses that the prophecy was fulfilled and it was not against the honor of my mother. He not only that, he was persecuted very strongly by the same ulama who were apparently siding with his mother and his father and he stood adamant against them so much so that he actually suffered at their hand and in their writing against him but he died in dedicated Ahmadi he did not budge an inch because of the pressure brought about upon him the word Jannah is the wrong translation mm -hmm. of heavens mm -hmm. Heavens, the heaven may mean that Jannah. Mm -hmm. But heavens, when you said, just indicates Allah as such. In the heaven it has been decided, it has been decided by God. So the same word is applied, uh, used by Rasulullah according to, uh, regarding his own nikah mm -hmm. with Maryam. The same word is used as Muslim Salaam regarding his nikah in one way. Mm -hmm. It is not Jannah. It is heaven, just heaven referring to God in the scene, we say heaven.